Hello, welcome to EFL HQ. I'm Charlie Taylor, and today I'm joined by Frank Gibson. Frank is the founder of our sister site, Robot HQ. Hello, Charlie. How nice are you? To be, uh, fine, and you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, nice to be back in Taidong for a change. Yes, you've been traveling around, mm, doing, sure some, doing some engineering work. Yes, in Bahrain. Okay, well, it's good to have you back. Frank and I used to work together teaching English at a local school. Which we won't mention. Which we won't mention, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, today we were going to talk a little bit about C-Level, which is contact, Content Language Integrated Learning. And it's, uh, it's kind of a buzzword, but it's also quite useful for EFL. Yeah. And Frank, in particular, uh, has been working with robotics in C-Level. So he's been using robotics to teach English as a foreign language. And uh, this is pretty useful because obviously you, you don't need to teach about the language in order for students to learn the language, in order for students to acquire the language. You need to be interacting with them in the target language. And unfortunately and bizarrely, 99% of foreign language classes focus on a very narrow topic, which is learning about the language. Yeah, like you said, learning about the language, yeah. not really using the language or uh, learning the language per se. Exactly. So you, you want to use uh, subject matter that's engaging for the students, obviously, because if students aren't paying attention, they're not getting anything from the process. And you want something that maybe will be useful for them in the future. Learning about the present perfect progressive is really only useful to students if they want to become a grammarian or a linguist, uh, which is not that many students. So instead you find subject matter that the students are engaged with and something that they can find useful. And STEM and STEAM, for example, a big growth area these days, so robotics slides very well into that field. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that, that's interesting stuff that students are uh, naturally attracted to things happening and also the, the satisfaction of actually doing something and seeing this is my creation and it, it behaves the way I programmed it to behave. It's very satisfying and while doing that they don't realize that they've interacted with me or you, whoever was presenting in the class, they, they don't realize that they were interacting also very naturally because they see most most of the uh, English or foreign language classes are presented by a foreigner so to speak to the locals and they see you as a foreigner so it's quite natural for them to use the foreign language to interact with you it, it's it just happens so tell me a little bit about how your robotics classes work is, is the all the Interaction with the students is done in English? Yes. Okay. Um, another reason for that is, I don't know uh, about other countries, it should be the same for most other countries. Uh, indeed, in Bahrain it also is. Uh, that uh, engineering courses and science courses are all presented at university level in English. Not all, but many, many classes are presented in English. So. Uh, that's that's another reason for doing it in English for the students to get acquainted with the uh, language before they go to university. The, the, the science of the language or the science words used in the language. So, when the students walk into your classroom on the first day, are they immediately happy to communicate with you in English, or does it take a while? How long? How long does it take to break through the barrier and, and, and get them participating in a way that? Maybe they're not even aware that they're speaking in English. I haven't had these real low-level classes yet, but uh, for the lowest level, we used a Taiwanese uh, helper who helped uh, the, the stuff that wasn't understood. The students could ask for an explanation, but it's it's mostly. Uh, in the beginning, when, when the class starts, it will be more uh, 
follow what I'm doing in steps and they see the steps and they hear what you are what you are describing. So if you say for instance you plug the yellow wire into port three, they they don't necessarily understand what that means, but they see okay, yellow and wire, port three, okay, and then it, of course that they won't remember all of that the first time, but over the course of the the whole robotics semester, they'll start associating yellow and wire and port and mm -hmm. things, and, and that will become vocabulary that they do now. So, so the visual aspect of seeing you do things and talk about it at the same time helps them to helps their comprehension, and then gradually they the vocabulary grows and their their willingness to interact with you also grows. Yes, okay. but as I said, the they always, or the lower levels, always had the option of asking uh, for an explanation in Chinese and in the classes that I had to explain exactly what was happening. Do you, do you find that the lower level students who initially ask the teacher, ask the, the local English teacher for help, do they need less and less help as the assessment? Yes, yes. No, for sure. So, so you, you actually notice the growth in confidence and proficiency over the course of the year? Yeah, it's, well, I've done EFL classes, just the regular EFL as well. So what you find in a regular English class, you, uh, you really have students unwilling to participate. They, they afraid and they, they get stressed up about am I going to give the right answer or whatever. This happens more naturally where they they present it with a problem, the robot doesn't want to move or doesn't want to turn or something and it it just naturally comes. It's like teacher, why doesn't this thing turn? Mm -hmm. And uh, they they don't realize that they've just spoken English right. or you know, made a question all by themselves. Mm -hmm. Where if you're in an EFL class and you say uh, this this book is white, now change it to a question, then it's all about mm -hmm. now how to do. Yeah, the, the production of language is is best done subconsciously. Yes. It's best done when you're not worried about the form, you're worried about the content of what you're saying, and, and you're not even really aware that you're interacting with somebody in a foreign language. You're just trying to get your idea across and understand what, what the instructor is telling you. So, mm -hmm. the, yeah. so robotics is a really effective way to go about doing that. I'd say so, yes, not just because I'm doing it, but yes. it is, yes. <laughs> okay, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, tell us about what you're doing uh, in the area of robotics now? Uh, in robotics at the moment, I'm more looking at training teachers to teach robotics because there's a huge shortage of robotics teachers or STEM teachers, if you want to call it that, uh, in the entire world. And many of the teachers, in my experience, in, in other workshops that we had, have no idea, it's just the principal that told them you're a good science teacher or whatever physics teacher and you'd be perfect for our robotics program and then this teacher is uh, thrown in the deep end so to speak and they have no idea about robotics mostly mm -hmm. and then they have to come up with lesson plans and activities from YouTube or whatever and not that that's bad but it's a it's a huge undertaking for any teacher to just come up with a curriculum where if you're a math teacher you just ask the school for the nice math textbook and you follow the textbook right. and there aren't any textbooks for robotics so I'm in the process of creating textbooks for different robotics platforms because uh, schools also use different platforms to teach robotics. There, there are kids 
like Vix and Lego and Arduino and a whole, whole host more that are geared towards educational robotics. So it's also not easy in that way because there's this wide variety of directions a school can go into to teach robotics. And the, the teachers that you're teaching, what percentage of them are teaching robotics in English as opposed to in Chinese as we're in, we're in Taiwan right now? <laughs> Not many. Not many, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, it's, I would like to, it's a neglected field. A, a potential for really good English language education is if more mm -hmm. different subjects are taught in English in Taiwan. For sure, yes. The, the big robotics people that I work with, they actually prefer, even they, they are a Taiwanese company, they actually prefer everything to be done in English rather than Chinese. Mm. But it's also, it's really kind of stressful for the teachers as well, because not many of them have the English capability yeah. to, to do the whole class in English. So, so there's a, a, a lack of confidence maybe in the, in the non-native speaking English teachers. Yes, for okay. sure. Yeah. That's, that's something that's been identified before in the, in the research is that there's nothing really about learning English from a native English speaker as opposed to a non-native English speaker. There's no real advantage in terms of how quickly you progress. But uh, the style of teaching is quite different because the native English speakers have more confidence to, to go off yeah. track yeah. instead of just, these are the rules of grammar that I learned in school, so I'm going to pass them on to you. The same thing that happens automatically with the kids, impart that on, on teachers as well to, to help them overcome this whole thing, thinking about, oh, am I saying this right or whatever. Because inevitably, if you're not a native speaker, you're going to make grammatical mistakes and all, all kinds of silly, small mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's not important. Yeah. Inquire, uh, acquiring the, the language and feeling comfortable using it is much more important than well, using it 100% correctly. Especially because the majority of people who speak English are not native English speakers. Yes. So you're much more likely to interact with people who aren't speaking perfect English than you are to interact with people who are speaking, well, standard, standard English. I totally go with the non-native robotics teachers. Teach those students the words for things like a wheel and a motor and a gear and things that they are going to use in university later right. because the majority of science-related uh, courses in, in, in university is taught in English. Yeah. yeah. So you have, you have a lot of Taiwanese students who don't have the vocabulary. They have to begin in first year university to acquire all the vocabulary for concepts that they already know. Yeah, they, they, might know for it. Yeah. Yeah. they might know everything in Chinese, but they, they sit in that class and it's like, whoa, what, what is this guy talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're going to have all the links to all of your projects in the description for this video below, so please check those out. And uh, also like us and follow us, and we'll be back at some point in the future. I hope you'll come back again soon and, and chat with us again. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. Very nice being here. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.